и посудительству совсем чуть-чуть. Я Джанго Кордиевка, который как раз делит или помогает делить Джанго Channels, про который мы сегодня уже слышали. И я вам расскажу, что планируется в версии Channel 2.0, зачем это планируется и, возможно, когда это будет. Прежде всего, что мы имеем в Channel версии 1.0. Поднимите руку, кто вообще хотя бы слышал про это. Ну, не густо. А кто пробовал, прям в продакшене запускает. Где-то они сейчас на вторая душа. Да, собственно, я прекрасно понимаю, что вроде как еще про первую версию недавно только слышали, еще не все переварили, тут уже про вторую приходится слышать. Давайте подытожим, что мы в ней имеем. Во-первых, это проект, которому уже три года. So it's uh, not a, a good uh, obstruction of the alternative of uh, WSGI. It uh, generates a lot of uh, traffic. Uh, it is very difficult to deploy it. And uh, it is the, the thing that uh, uses uh, the Django engine. And I will talk about uh, those uh, things and I will explain why we have them. So what have what we have done for the past uh, three years and me I've been participating in it uh, for for the last uh, six months. Many people tried it in uh, the production, but uh, many people did not like it. However, the community of uh, Framework and uh, Django are getting interested in it, the more so that uh, the channels have been moved to the official repository of uh, Django and uh, they use all the policies and uh, the same requirements. Uh, they have to meet the same requirement and it is indicative of the maturity of the framework. So what I meant when I said that uh, channels are not a replacement of SG because SG is a messenger protocol and it explains how you can serialize HTTP2 uh, frame to put it uh, on uh, the uh, channel and uh, it can tell you how it can you can serialize the uh, web socket but uh, mostly it is about how you can uh, write your own CTP channel, what uh, characteristics uh, it should meet. And uh, that's what uh, the people use when they uh, use uh, ASGI and uh, they have to understand how this machinery works. And if we take uh, VSGI, what is it, first of all? Is it, it is a protocol that uh, emerged to give a choice uh, to people for you to be able to launch framework with different uh, servers and uh, to use your own middleware, some linkers uh, that uh, act uh, between the Unicorn and uh, Django. And uh, ASGI does not give uh, such a pluggable interface. It is a network layer that is uh, hidden inside the layers. We cannot get uh, the user-friendly interface. Another thing, it is uh, not perfect because to implement some customs logics, you have to engineer, devise your own conventions that are implemented in the channels. For example, 
there is a multiplexer thing between uh, the different handlers. When inside uh, the message itself, uh, between the socket, uh, we pass the information which handler should uh, handle the message. And uh, if you decide uh, to write a code that is communicated uh, through ASGI inside your system, you will have to uh, open up uh, how through what conventions the channel is uh, implemented and it is a lot of manual work that does not give you the required interface and uh, another th thing it's about uh, the net traffic as uh, as uh, when one of the trolls of the internet said he said if i believe that my call of functions uh, are to call i throw it back to throw in some latency and it ironic, uh, ironically reads that uh, you should not uh, introduce uh, the network uh, cooperation combination if it is not needed and all the traffic at the Django server it uh, moves uh, in the network uh, for example Wet, uh, web circuit termination service of Daphne, there is a network uh, interaction, it increases the latency and traffic and it is difficult to scale it up and it would be blocked by Raptin Q, Q and it is an extra work that uh, you should, surplus work that you should do. So we have found a way out with a prop and uh, and inside uh, the channel layer it is possible to decide which message is uh, routed uh, where and there is a prop like uh, if uh, the worker will need it uh, i will send it to redis and if the low or it could be sent uh, to the local and uh, if it, it is such a feature that uh, if it uh, fails is not quite uh, clear how to mend it it's very difficult very tricky to deploy channels that's uh, how we can see the whole world it is a network of at least composed out of three elements that's what uh, the deploy of the live system looks uh, and uh, at that we need a live balancer the more components this system has the more frequently it uh, fails the most uh, frequent thing that is filed in the system and uh, let's take something to test uh, web sockets and uh, let pass uh, messages uh, through our infrastructure and then everything collapses because uh, every channel has got uh, such a thing as uh, the filling of the channel and it makes it uh, possible to use uh, different uh, machinery in the web sockets and uh, this uh, which it is uh, small not uh, to fill memory when there are many parallel uh, connections we are not uh, going to store the messages from one user and uh, in this case we have uh, to play with the number of the workers to handle the required number of the users to get the uh, sufficient results it is very tricky, difficult, and uh, when I told that uh, it will take us a week to implement uh, channels, uh, they, I don't know, they were, I was on the verge of uh, getting fired, though I have de de developed it myself, but uh, it took me a lot of time to implement it. and. Uh, uh, is the thing that takes up a lot of overheads in the ecosystem and uh, another thing is how they are used it is uh, channels are come back hell and uh,
to store state between the calls we have framework sessions to uh, store state between uh, the processing one message at worker one and another from the same WordPress socket at uh, worker two and the, the frame sessions are also used to receive information from the HTTP uh, call that has been upgraded to web socket and uh, of course uh, we have uh, different uh, short uh, cuts uh, like uh, those we love in uh, Django to have uh, the machinery required to make life uh, easier for the user users and another thing some systems behave in such a way that each message from the user can be processed uh, after the previous message is processed. That's why the sessions are used as a distributed work, which uh, does not help to scale it, and uh, pretty often the production uh, systems do not work uh, properly because of scalability of the back end. So that's not that uh, good. And uh, another thing, there are many confused uh, users in the channels. And uh, initially, the groups uh, were concocted as a mechanism, machinery for broadcast, like sending push notifications, uh, like somebody has written some kind of blog or whatever. But uh, people are still stubborn in uh, not believing that it is uh, the messaging machinery and they wish uh, to use it as a data store like uh, storing the uh, list uh, of uh, users uh, in gr groups from uh, the chat and uh, uh, people meddle into the groups and uh, they complain that uh, public IP does not work uh, properly and uh, second groups uh, is not an ex abstraction is not such an abstraction that uh, were designed as a public IP but uh, however it uh, got into public IP at its early stages and uh, people started using it the weight they wanted left to their own devices and uh, if we take the ASG format uh, groups they are very complicated there are very strict requirements and uh, if uh, at least one message was old in channel it would should be removed uh, from all the groups and so to implement the channel layer very complicated logic uh, should uh, be done to process all those things because it is very difficult uh, to retain those requirements in the production system however all the cleanup uh, mechanism of the machinery are supposed to comply with the ASG specifications. What are the issues of implementation of the channel layers uh, that uh, you come across in production? Redis, first of all, it does not support uh, groups uh, completely, like a cleanup uh, machinery do not work the way sh they should. That's why Redis overheads are very high uh, when uh, you use uh, web sockets uh, in different uh, groups they take up uh, a lot of uh, memory Daphne on the other hand use uh, pooling for Redis which cannot uh, but uh, disappoint the users uh, when uh, idling the processing time is uh, ticking and uh, there are costs uh, like uh, quite high for it on uh, and the uh, three uh, Redis and the uh, channel layer are not uh, scaled up uh, transparently because the consistent uh, cache algorithm is uh, used to send uh, messages to nodes if you decide to add one node to your cluster 
uh, hash would uh, collapse. It is non-consistent, and uh, to add one node on the load, you will have uh, to suppress the cluster, and then you will have uh, to switch it on. And uh, because it is under load, it is live. There are users over there, and uh, they got offended. And it is, I have written the ASGI, uh, and uh, and it took me four months to write it, and this is the most complicated code that I have written, because uh, there are uh, loops of the parallel in two trains that uh, communicate between themselves on the, the primitives of trade dice, and the reason for that is that the library could be called both from synchronous and asynchronous code, and the only library that uh, suited was uh, Peak, which has the intrinsic elements, uh, and f for the ASGI Rebus to be working, we had to address it like that. Channels in the work I use to like to use trading, but uh, this library is not, and uh, we had to force the library to be a trace e, and the uh, trading lock is uh, used in the places uh, where no sensible programmer would put it to, and uh, a second. The INQP and ANG protocols are similar from the point of view of primitives used, but they're very much different in what direction they work. ASGI say that uh, you can eat something into the layer and you can get something from the layer. At the same time, ANQK is operating with the facts, like I sign up for a certain channel, and uh, Rabbit uh, TMQ will send the message one way or another. You cannot take the message from Rabbit just like that. You can actually wait for Rabbit to make it available for you. So accordingly, we had to apply lots of conventions and compromises to implement the protocol over Rabbit. And so uh, the production list actually was greatly increased. But all of it is detailed in the documentation. However, people spend uh, days or weeks to launch the cluster in the channels. However, it is the only channel layer which fully supports SG protocol and the transport scale when it's possible to add the nodes without destroying the system. As we can see, to show the number of messages on the envelope, and actually I do want you to use the system, but that would be too big of a red kill. Everything should be much simpler. That's why Andrew Godwin, as the key leader of the project, the person who has introduced 90% of the comments, possibly paid attention to the fact that it seemed as if we had done something wrong. And um, the development of Channel 2.0 was strongly supported by the discussion. And there are people who know about it here. They say that there is a HGI protocol which can be linked to framework synchronously. But why does every server uh, adds uh, its own AP, etc.? That is to say, every system is monolithic with uh, zero reuse of the code. That's why it was suggested 
that a small uh, interlay abstraction should be written. So he actually suggested a uvicorn of this world, even though it didn't have a follow-up. However, it did arouse the interest from the community. So finally, they opted for having channel version 2 to think about. Let us now look at the system requirements uh, that we need. First of all, we need to be able to push into the channel from anywhere. That is to say, both using simultaneous usage, simultaneous synchronous and asynchronous code, we should be able to use other machines because for distributed chatting, uh, chat, uh, it may develop on interconnections. Uh, that's why we need to see the same messages all over. And this system should also have cross socket and cross process communication. So what does Andrew suggest? He suggested that we need to somehow revise our attitude to the system used. First of all, in channel 2.0, all the workers are run inside Daphne. So all the synchronous operations are done within a synchronous uh, process in the pools. And if a synchronous process needs uh, an asynchronous operation to be run, it is done using uh, Tradewalker. <clears throat> Secondly, the, the store socket state is made out of the system. That is to say, we do it within one process where everybody can intercommunicate and to be able to process the events from each socket we do not need to cross the network, we need the pool. So accordingly, the session engine is not required anymore. And the sequence of processing is also ensured through this solution. Besides that, it is also proposed to introduce a consumer abstraction that's why deployment is uh, simplified quite significantly and we do not need to make a mess of uh, three servers at a time and for the production system we will need a number of instances capable of intercommunicating however for processing inside the workers we don't need to enter the network. The problem that we sometimes face is that if one of the servers is overloaded with uh, messages, it may start failing. That's why in this case it is suggested that the clients should uh, switch over to other servers to ensure the correct operation of the system. In what way can we achieve it? First of all, we need a bridge using both synchronous and asynchronous uh, mode. Since historically, Twisted was uh, chosen to implement Daphne, and it is still the case, it is also used inside, but only for SynCIO uh, and for Python 2 support in Django 2 there'll be no Python 2 consumers uh, turn into our key IP to use and uh, the routing 
turns into a consumer so it's possible to write an asynchronous code inside of routing first of all about the bridge to turn the asynchronous code into into synchronous code into synchronous one we need to apply this equation in order to run uh, a synchronous code on synchronous code we do as shown here a twisted has been uh, reproached uh, on many occasions but they do have a number of things like async and uh, some others so that uh, this code is wrong here in the slide. <clears throat> I was just in a hurry to prepare it. That's why accordingly it is quite a fresh uh, Python uh, in terms of its style. And finally, we could use a sync await inside of Jungle. And we can then write an asynchronous consumer, which can uh, use a wait with Jungle Chenga. It can be boosted in the trays so that uh, returning to the database should not uh, destroy the event loop and in this way routing turns into its own consumer and uh, you can use it as a CTP consumer or socket consumer <coughs> and you can receive SMS uh, uh, acknowledgement codes and the route uh, simply turned into a consumer sending messages to other consumers so what are the results achieved through this system first of all a lot of handshaking traffic is removed because I don't need uh, it anymore groups that really confuse people go uh, uh, away and uh, finally, the very first conscientious steps are taken to uh, synchronize Django in order to write a sync, then a model name, and then the other details. Here are the links for you to use to read about the current state of affairs and uh, you should uh, wait for updates because this is not the end of the story that's all I wanted to say I don't know whether we have any time left for questions any questions I have a question could you quite in a nutshell tell us about now because you have mentioned it several times but I didn't know about it actually I thought that you had already attended my first uh, overview presentation actually when we speak about channels e I mean the asynchronous cases that you may use when uh, doing live updates for various modifications or when you need to show the number of incoming messages in an envelope. So it is not an asynchronous real-time system, but it's rather a lump of uh, asynchronous mode on the sides of Jenga. Everything looks quite terrifying to me. Is there any alternative to uh, a synchronous interaction with NDI without IQ channels. My second question is what happens in the database uh, because with Junkie it will never happen but then what's the way it should be then? Uh, speaking about the use of VSGI without Junkie channels for instance in Tornado there is VSGI which looks quite similar to version 2.0 where you can handle web sockets inside Tornado 
and then it is propagated even further on to subsidiary processes for implementation <coughs> and as regards a synchronous access to ORN. The ORN itself uh, will never become a synchronous uh, but in Django it can be used asynchronously that is to say when you do a sync the user dot object dot get uh, the loop will not be stopped and uh, it would go on running other things however a syn uh, on will never become a synchronous inside but this application will make it possible to use it where it is really needed or whatever well just to avoid misunderstanding uh, file asynchronous operations are not present in Linux, for instance. Well, I could be a bore to say that there are two modes never used by anybody. One of them was made for Oracle, and uh, possibly the people who handle it know how to use it. But with Node, asynchronous operations are done using threading. And this is the general practice, but when it comes to a synchronous OM, it is an interesting thing, even though it is not so badly needed at all, because as a result, we get it slow, and the next step uh, to arrive at high load numbers is there, believe me or not. But it is quite an attractive thing. The only problem is that the people who are capable of writing it uh, do something else, uh, and the people who want to do it do not do it. So I've seen asynchronous uh, things, uh, but I haven't seen a single one which we could be proud of. With Jagger, it is not uh, perfect. However, technically, it is feasible. But uh, speaking about alchemy's uh, layers, we understand that we don't need so many layers. Uh, so it can. Well, there was a guy who did it for 10 years. I mean, it's really a great challenge. So we need to learn how to write it in the proper way. And uh, speaking about Magda, it's a uh, thing apart. That's it. Are there any more questions? If there are no more questions, we'll finish our session then. Thank you.